everyone, and welcome back to Maya's Reviews, a book podcast and blog. If you're new here, welcome, and I hope you stick around. I promise I'll at least try to make it worth your time. Before getting started today, I want to talk about my schedule real quick. As some of you may know, because of the last episode, I think episode 15, and I think I even mentioned this in episode 14, I'm planning on going back to just one episode per week. I'm still going to be doing two reviews per week for the foreseeable future, at least for August and I think early September. But as of right now, I'm planning on, you know, lessening my workload a little bit for the blog and podcast because I'm slowly diving into a reading slump, so um, I don't want to get there and not be able to crawl my way out because I burned myself out over the summer. So, I'm planning on doing that now, so, <laughs> um, because this is posted Friday, so, you know, it's only one episode this week, but if you haven't already, definitely check out, um, my review of Parting the Veil and As the World Falls Down on my blog, and... Also, the Q&A episode, I do have a little update for that. I think I mentioned this in episode 15 as well, but I might as well reiterate it because I forget a lot. Um, I'm planning on closing the Q&A form on September 3rd. So if you haven't already or you want to ask more questions, go fill out that form before September 3rd. And if you don't want to fill out the form, you can also... I think you can submit a voice message through Anchor and actually have your voice be in the episode. So if you would like to do that as well, feel free to do that too. Um, And I think that's all I have actually today for updates. So let's just get right into this review. Today I'm going to be reviewing Parting the Veil by Paulette Kennedy. Thank you so much to Lake Union Publishing, Amazon Publishing, and Paulette Kennedy for providing me with an arc of this novel in exchange for an honest review. There is a content warning. Self-harm, suicidal ideation, implied incest, child abuse, non-sexual, sexual abuse, domestic abuse, marital rape, verbal abuse, consensual sexual content, forced captivity, murder, racism, assault, mild violence, mild drug use, alcoholism, arson, death, drowning, child and pregnancy loss, war, blood, sexism, misogyny, abandonment, and toxic power dynamics are all present in this novel. And thank you so much to Paulette Kennedy for providing a full list of content warnings on Goodreads. It's very much appreciated. So, I had the lovely opportunity to read Parting the Veil by Paulette Kennedy, who is an amazing author and such a kind person, and it's one of my favorite novels, so I'm very excited for this review today. I rated Parting the Veil 5 out of 5 stars, so plot, setting, characters, writing, and memorability were all 5 out of 5 stars as well. Parting the Veil is the perfect mix of romance, horror, mystery, and historical fiction, It's haunting and dark, and Paulette Kennedy's debut novel is an excellent journey to the discovery of family secrets that threaten the world of Eliza Sullivan and her goal of freedom. Parting the Veil will be published on November 1st, 2021 by Lake Union Publishing, and it will be 387 pages long. It's a historical fiction, gothic, thriller, horror, romance, adult, LGBTQ novel. And the book's description? Some houses hold secrets that are meant to be kept forever. When Eliza Sullivan inherits an estate from a recently deceased aunt, she leaves behind a grievous and guilt-ridden past in New Orleans for rural England and a fresh start. Eliza arrives at her new home and finds herself falling for the mysterious lord of Havenwood, Malcolm Winfield. Despite the sinister rumors that surround him, Eliza is drawn to his melancholy charm and his crumbling, once beautiful mansion. With enough love, she thinks, both man and manor could be repaired. Not long into their marriage, Eliza fears that she should have listened to the locals. There's something terribly wrong at Havenwood Manor. Forbidden rooms, 
ghostly whispers in the shadows, strangely guarded servants, and Malcolm's threatening moods as changeable as night and day. As Eliza delves deeper into Malcolm's troubling history, the dark secrets she unearths gain a frightening power. Has she married a man or a monster? For Eliza, uncovering the truth will either save her or destroy her. So, Parting the Veil follows Eliza Sullivan, the badass main character, and her journey of love, self-forgiveness, and freedom. And I absolutely loved Eliza for a main character, especially since the novel is set in the 1800s. I found her to be very powerful and strong and such a good representation, um, which just a quick mention i love that even though the novel takes place in england in 1899 black kennedy did not hesitate to represent the lgbtq community eliza is not only a badass lady in the 1890s which good for her but she's also bisexual and many of the characters are as well um i forget the lady's name but there's um a lesbian and gay character mentioned and I think a trans character as well. I'm not sure. It's fuzzy. I don't remember things, but there was a lot of representation and good representation at that, not stereotypes or token characters. So I really appreciated that, and it was really, really nice to see. And it's a good example for authors who claim, you know, that in historical fiction, you know, gay characters are not realistic and... <laughs> say hi to Poppy in the background, um, but I think it's a really good example of how, you know, excuses like that just don't work, like, you can have representation in your novels and have it still be realistic, um, so a large portion of the novel is dedicated to Eliza's romance with the Lord of Havenwood, Malcolm Winfield, which, as kind-hearted and romantic as he seems, a dark secret is growing beneath the surface of his character that Eliza is forced to face. So, Malcolm was actually a really complex character, and I found myself drawn into trying to figure him out just like Eliza was in the novel. Interested in starting a podcast? I bet you haven't heard of Anchor, an app and site that makes it super easy to create your own. Not only is it free, but Anchor also allows you to make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Anchor distributes your podcast for you to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more platforms. Anchor has creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone and computer. It's everything you need all in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M to get started today. I gotta say that at first, I was completely with Eliza, and I was like, yeah, no, Malcolm's fine. Ignore all the petty town smoke. We're good. Go marry Malcolm, Eliza. You, you got this. But then I started thinking, and I'm like, I listen to a lot of true crime. And I know that rumors, th there's a flame there for some reason half the time. So maybe we should have not rushed into marrying him. Especially because, like, you're rich, he's kind of poor. Let's not rush into this. But, um, Eliza did. And so we're, <laughs> we're just kind of left trying to figure out who Malcolm is, the entire story, and Eliza's trying to do this as well, because she married this kind-hearted and romantic person, and then as soon as they're married, he's, he's, he's a dick, and I'm like, wow, okay, thanks, <laughs> which, sorry, mother, if you're listening to this, <laughs> so, yeah, I just, Malcolm is one of those characters, which, especially with, I'm not going to spoil anything because that defeats the entire purpose of me reviewing the novel, but especially with um, how the novel plays out, it's very interesting to me, and I think, <laughs> I think it says a lot, how even though I knew it wasn't smart, I was like, yes, we love Malcolm. He, he's amazing, when really I should have 
been more cautious, like, the entire, anyways, but I'll stop ranting about Malcolm now, but I'm, I have a love-hate relationship with this character. I really do. Um, which, Ken all of Kennedy's characters were lively and complex. I mean, I genuinely felt a connection to them, and I really, really loved how complex they were. That is <laughs> the door. Um, but yeah, they were very complex and very well written, and it's very clear to me that Kennedy put a lot of thought into her characters. Um, they weren't just like paper thin and just like words on a in, a, in a novel. They were real in a way, you know, as all good novels characters are. Um, and they were perfectly written for the historical romance and thriller novel that she created. And by the way, the romance that was written, there, there are some issues with it, mainly because of Malcolm. <laughs> but I gotta say, I really, really liked it. <laughs> It's like, it's like the same thing when you're a teenager and you're reading Twilight and you're like, oh yeah, Edward, let's go. And then you look back and you're like, wow, no thank you. <laughs> like, I'm going to be sitting here rereading the novel in a year or a few months and I'm going to be like, what was I thinking? But, you know, I got to stand by Malcolm. He's on thin ice, but I still really like the romance that Kennedy wrote, I just gotta say. Um, and speaking of Kennedy, the author's writing is just absolutely perfect and turns the atmosphere of the novel into something sinister. Ignore Poppy barking downstairs. As many of you know, because of every pretty much every episode, at least once we have to have Poppy barking at a mailman. But yeah, I definitely think Kennedy's writing just completely turned the novel into something sinister and just mysterious. And I think it really, really worked with um, how the novel carried along. And I honestly, I really love Kennedy's writing style and I'm so excited for their future works. Um, and then, as I mentioned, Parting the Veil takes place in 1899 in England. So, Eliza has moved there to claim her deceased aunt's estate and potentially find more freedom than America offered. But in doing so, she finds that the society of England is perhaps even more inhibiting. And this, coupled with the atmosphere, the sinister and dark and mysterious atmosphere, is just really... It really twists this novel into something that, I mean, just keeps you holding your breath and on the edge of your seat. It's very um, tension-filled, and I really, really enjoyed that aspect. The plot was perhaps my favorite part of the novel, which is, it's hard to have a favorite part of this novel when it's just perfection. Um... <laughs> The amount of twists and turns Kennedy wrote had me sitting on the edge of my seat in anticipation, and I literally, I was on vacation when I read this novel, which, oh my gosh, I actually read all of the books that I brought on vacation. I mean, that never happens for me, um, but I did, and Parting the Veil was one of them, and I stayed up. I started the novel, I think... Um, when was that? It was like mid vacation and I started it in the middle of the day and I finished this novel in like one and a half days. I literally stayed up till one in the morning till um to read this novel because it was just so good and I could not stop. I mean, Eliza's discoveries are just really, really wicked and just so like, I literally cannot process how Kennedy came up with something so magnificent. It was just perfect. The most amazing thing about the plot that Kennedy wrote is that I had no idea what was going to happen. I was as in the dark as Eliza the entire novel, which it takes a true master of mystery to completely deceive your reader and leave them in the unknown. I mean, often when I read mystery novels, I can kind of, you know, you can kind of guess, you can kind of look and say, oh, this is what's going to happen, you know, this is what happens in every mystery novel. But 
Parting the Veil is so unique and original that I genuinely had no idea what was going to happen. I was so just full of anticipation for how the story was going to play out. Um, And I think that's one of the magical parts of this novel is that it's so mysterious and dark and yet so unique. But yeah, I just, I don't have enough good words to say about Parting the Veil. It's by far one of my favorite novels, and just for reference, I'm actually not a huge fan of romance or historical fiction. Neither of them are a genre that I typically read, and yet this novel is a mixture of those, and I absolutely loved it. Um, And I actually recommended it to my mom. I was sitting there on vacation, and I was like, hey, um, read this novel please. (laughs) So yeah, I just, I'm so excited for its release because then I can talk with people about it. Um, It was just too good and I loved it so much. And again, thank you so much, Paulette Kennedy, for reaching out to me and sending me a copy of the novel because it was amazing and I loved it so much. So yeah, I think that's the end of my review of Parting the Veil by Paulette Kennedy, and I'm so excited for the author's future works. Like, you have no idea. Um, I hope you enjoyed this review, and if you did, please check out my blog, Maya's Reviews, at mayagreviews.wordpress.com. You can also find me at Maya the Bookworm on Twitter, Goodreads, TikTok, BookBub, and Book Sirens. I'm also on Tumblr at my reviews. If you want me to review your book or want to come on the podcast to discuss a novel, maybe even just reach out to me, you can email me at mayagbookreviews at gmail.com. I do ask that if you are reaching out in regards to a review request, interview, collab, blog tour, anything publicity, pub, pub, publicity related that you check out my publicity request page on my blog first and then email me thank you so much for listening and happy reading